the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro. Is it still worth it or did you miss the boat? Let's talk about it. Yo, what up YouTube? Crash Wilcox and we're kind of taking a look at the M1 MacBook Pro, um, the 13 inch, sort of in light of the fact that the new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros were just released. So sort of the question that we want to look at is, you know, should you go for the new higher end 14, 16 inch MacBook Pro or will the 2020 model, the 13 inch, still be good enough? So I'm going to kind of try to do this as best I can, you know, the way I always do reviews, kind of looking at, you know, what the machine is, talking about the specs a little bit. I mean, most of you know about the M1 MacBook at this point. And then we'll look at some benchmarks as well and then kind of come back with my final thoughts. So obviously, you all know, 13 inch M1 MacBook kind of came and sort of took the PC, or not the PC, but the laptop world by storm, you know, in 2020 when it came out. Um, People could do nothing but rave about the M1 chip and how you know energy efficient, how cool it ran, and how much power you could get from that. And actually having my hands on it is it truly is special. Um, so looking at it, obviously 13, I think it's 13.3 inches for the screen. Um, 16 by 10 aspect ratio you know, 500 nits of brightness. So the screen is beautiful. And going through here, um, it's got the, you know, the M1 in this generation was the eight core CPU, eight core GPU um, with whatever, the 16 core neural engine, whatever they decided to make up some name to draw you in. And um, just looking around the sides or around the laptop, obviously, you know, it's got the, it's the standard MacBook, right? You guys have all seen it, but keyboard, wonderful trackpad, big and wonderful. Um, it's got the two Thunderbolt four ports on the, what is that? The right side, depending on how you're looking at it. And then the audio jack on the left side, depending on how you're looking at it. So um, I mean, obviously that's the MacBook, uh, three pounds. So incredibly lightweight, great build quality. Um, speakers are good for a laptop of this size, obviously. Um, so that's sort of the, the M1 Mac, right? I mean, it's what you've all heard before. So what I want to do now is because I don't want to belabor this too long. You know what the specs are. You've seen them probably a dozen or more times. So I want to just jump into some benchmarks. And then once those get done sort of rolling through the screen, I'll come back here and I'll give you my thoughts on if it's still worth it in late 2021 with the release of the new 14 and 16 inch MacBooks or save your money. You missed the boat. So that's what we're going to talk about when we come back from these benchmarks.
So I hope you found those benchmarks helpful. Um, if you didn't, sorry. Um, go look on YouTube. There's 8 million more videos with benchmarks. So you can find them. That's not the point of this video. The point of this video is not how good is the uh, M1 MacBook. It's whether or not you should still buy this model in 2021. And um, what I would say is I think, yes, you should still um, look for this model if you can find it and, you know, it fits your budget. I think it's still worth it in 2021. And the reasons why I say it. So I just saw a video. Um, it was like, can Marquee Brownlee, you know, finally edit 8K footage on the new M1 Max and cool, catchy title. I'm sure it's a great video. Uh, most of his stuff is, but who cares? Like for the vast majority of us, right? Who cares? You don't have an 8K camera. And to be fair, everything I've seen of Marquis Brownlee, I don't know why he does either. <laughs> you know, unless he's on the side shooting Hollywood blockbuster films, most of the stuff I've seen from him can be shot with some cell phones and, you know, normal 500 to a thousand dollar cameras. But, you know, I guess when you have access to unlimited tech and, you know, all the money in the world, you might as well get it. And I agree, you know, if you have all the money in the world, go buy the 16 inch um, M1 Max and, you know, buy an 8K red camera or whatever you want because you got the money. But for the rest of us, we don't have that much money. And I think that's where the M1, the 13 inch uh, still has a place because you kind of got to know what you, what you need, right? Because most of us, we're not shooting videos on a 8K camera. Um, most of you are like me. Maybe you're shooting a YouTube video with your cell phone, or maybe you are, you know, you've got a, a like me, a Sony ZV-1 that you're recording some video on and, or your some gameplay footage or, you know, whatever happens to be, you're taking one or two, um, you know, pieces of film, maybe adding in an extra song, some audio, a couple transitions, and you make a 10 to 15 minute YouTube video. You don't, you don't need an M1 Max to do that. This is what you need. Uh, this is perfect for that. And um, it's, you know, there is nothing more portable than this laptop. I'll be honest, this is the first laptop that I've used in years where it was actually fun to use. Like, I literally just found myself, you know, I have this set up downstairs to external monitors and stuff like that. But I found myself just walking around the house with this thing. Always a reason to have it on me. The typing on it is enjoyable. You never need a mouse around because the track pad's perfect. And just the Mac environment, the way the OS works, um, you know, the keyboard shortcuts and gestures and all that make a mouse, you know, not something you really need to have on you all the time. So it's enjoyable to use still to this day. And really this 13 inch frame is way more easy to manage than a 16 inch uh, model. You know, I had a 2019 MacBook Pro 16 and it's, you know, still moderately, you know, portable and light, but not like this. Um, this thing you can tuck under your arm, you know, you're walking around, sitting on the couch, watching football at night, um, doing whatever work you're doing. And it works perfectly like that. You know, and the power is still there. And what's even more amazing is the fact that this thing works as powerfully, whether it's plugged in or not. And the battery, it, it doesn't drain. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. You know, I know that they say it rates for 20 hours or whatever. It doesn't drain. I don't know. You can be editing in Final Cut, um, running some uh, audio in Logic Pro, surfing the web, the battery doesn't drain. It's voodoo magic. And I don't know if the M1 Max is gonna be able to live up to that, but um, this model I have here came with 16 gigs of RAM with a terabyte SSD, which is where I really think you need to be if you're talking about a modern laptop. So it's still pricey even at that. I feel like 
you know, I went online and I'm looking up, you know, used M1 Max. I'm going to buy all the ones for sale are the 8 gig RAM, 256 gig hard drive. I'm like, why would you buy a laptop with a 256 gig hard drive? I know you can go external. That's a nightmare. So this, and it came in right around 17, 1800 bucks. So it's still pricey, but all the power you would need for what we do. Um, if you have a channel at all like mine, um, or you make videos at all like mine. And it still works very well for that. And the thing is, is like when they design these laptops and we buy these laptops, right? And we spend $1,800, we convince ourselves, uh, you know, it's worth the money, right? Cause it's gonna last me two, three, four years. And it should. So if this just came out last year, it still has a lot of service life left in it. And that's why I think you can feel comfortable and you're gonna be spending half the price of an M1 Max. So it definitely still has a place. And um, I will just say something I never hear anybody really, I do some of those, I think like two gaming benchmarks in there, Fortnite and Metro Exodus. Yeah, it'll play, you know, you can mess around a little bit on there. But I do think that's also, if you're not a Mac guy, maybe you're a PC guy thinking about Mac, this is something I don't hear anybody really ever talk about, but I find a huge benefit to the Mac OS is the fact that it really can't game. Yeah, it'll play some games on here, but a lot of the games you wanna play aren't even available on Mac OS. And what that does, if you're like me and you see shiny objects and you get super confused and you know um, distracted, you can't game. <laughs> There's nothing to do but your work on here. And it helps you focus a lot once you're on here. And I really appreciate that with Mac. It, it knows its lane and it does it well. So I don't think the not gaming aspect is a limitation. I actually find it to be a benefit of Mac OS. Um, and then the other real limitation that it has on here is the two Thunderbolt ports. Um, and that's really about it. And that is a limitation for sure, but they have easy workarounds. So like what I have, and I'll have them linked down in the description if you want to go um, maybe purchase an M1 or some of these other products. Um, you can use those affiliate links. They help me out a little bit, but they'll also help you out with the product. So you can get stuff that's super inexpensive, you know, like a little USB-C um, dock like this that comes with, you know, an SD card reader. It's got USB-C, USB-A, it's got HDMI, it's got power pass-through, um, ethernet ports. And you don't have to go with one of the, you know, super expensive Thunderbolt 4 docks that, you know, the big time YouTube channels will tell you you need to buy. You know, go get this Kel Digit T3 that's $300. This costs like 65 bucks. Um, and it's easy to pack with you. It works perfectly. It's designed for the Mac and it works great. And if, you know, and I would take this one with me and then when it was plugged into my um, external monitor, I had this and this is perfect because it just plugs right in to the side of your Mac and it just works as, you know, a little external USB-C dock. It's got, um, it's got HDMI, it's got um, Thunderbolt 3 USB-C, it's got SD card readers, USB-A ports, um, power pass through so you can still run the power and keep the laptop charged. So, and this cost me 30 bucks maybe. So the, the ports on the laptop are a liability, yes, but they're a very easily fixed liability um, that don't make it terribly unobtrusive, or obtrusive to kind of take with you. So should you buy the M1 Mac, the 13 inch M1 Mac in late 2021? Um, yeah, I mean, unless you can afford to shell out $3,000 for a, a Max or a Pro, then sure, go buy one of those. But this still has a lot of life left, a lot of power. It will fit your workflow perfectly. Mac OS is built to get content created and not, you know, take up your time with distractions. Um, it's ultra portable, fun to use. Keyboard is still great. Trackpad is still great. It never gets warm. The battery never drains. 
So for all those reasons, I would still highly recommend the 13 inch M1 Mac if you're in the market for a new laptop and uh, Mac OS is your thing. So I hope you guys found this helpful. If you did, please drop a like, drop a subscribe. I would certainly appreciate that, but that is all we got for today. God bless.